Uh, hi, everybody. This is what we learned from the Gateway API, designing Linkerd's new policy CRD. Uh, this room is so big, I don't know where to look. Uh, uh, so this is a talk by my colleague, Matei David. He was not able to make it, unfortunately, because of visa issues, so I'm giving this talk instead of him. Um, so hopefully I do a good job with it. Uh, so my name is Alex. I'm a software engineer at Buoyant. Uh, we're the creators of Linkerd. I've been a Linkerd maintainer since the beginning of the project, and it's uh, something I'm really passionate about. I think service meshes are very, very cool, and we have recently done a lot of really interesting stuff with the Gateway API that I want to talk about. Uh, okay, so show of hands, who is familiar with Linkerd here? Okay, a lot of people, great. Um, what about who's familiar with the Gateway API? Uh, still a good number, but, but, but fewer. Okay, cool. So I, I guess I don't have to spend too much time talking about Linkerd itself. It's a service mesh. It's a graduated project in the CNCF. It's used in production in many different places by many different people. Um, and it's a very uh, collaborative and active open source community. Uh, so as a service mesh, that means that there is a sidecar proxy uh, in every pod that's part of the mesh that adds a lot of really interesting functionality like MTLS uh, between all your services, uh, reliability features like retries and timeouts, um, and a lot of observability features like layer seven metrics on success rate, request rate, and latency. Um, and uh, with a major focus on operational simplicity. So the whole thing kind of works out of the box and, and doesn't require you dedicating a lot of brain power to, to making it work. Uh, so the main focuses behind Linkerd are just that it's supposed to be very, very lightweight, both in terms of resource usage, which means that it doesn't take up a lot of memory and it doesn't add a lot of latency, uh, but also lightweight uh, conceptually in that it's a very simple model that you don't have to think too much about and you can operate it uh, without getting bogged down in the details. Um, so being simple and secure right out of the box has been kind of a guiding principle for the project. Uh, the control plane is written in, uh, this says Go, but it's actually now a combination of Go and Rust. And the data plane is a custom built proxy uh, written in Rust, uh, built to be ultra light. Okay, so I'm gonna give a little bit of background uh, here about um, how authorization works in Linkerd. Uh, so this is a fairly new feature that was added in uh, Linkerd 2.11, I think uh, sometime last, earlier this year or, or late last year maybe. Um, and that's kind of kind of set the stage for why we care about the Gateway API and, and how it's going to help us. Uh, so the idea is that we wanted to add uh, a way to do um, authorization in Linkerd. So, to take a step back, Linkerd has MTLS, and it had MTLS for a very long time. Um, and what that means is that for every uh, pod in your service mesh, it has an identity. And it has this workload identity that has been built up from its uh, service account token. And that gets transformed into a certificate, which it uses for all of its communication to, to other pods. And so that means that when two pods talk to each other, the M in MTLS means that they can mutually authenticate uh, their identity. So if I'm talking, if I'm the foo pod and I'm talking to the bar pod, I can cryptographically know that the person on the other side of this connection is uh, someone with the bar identity. And likewise, they know that what's on my side of the connection is someone with the foo identity. Um, and this is really awesome because it means not only is that connection encrypted, but it's also we know who the other person is and we know that uh, securely. And so we've had that in Linkerd for a really long time, but what we haven't had is really a way to act on that information, a way to uh, do authorization, which is to say, you know, I'm only going to allow certain identities to talk to me, or I'm only going to authorize, you know, uh, certain parties from, from establishing connections. And so we wanted to add that, uh, and that's, that was a major focus of Linkerd 2.11. Um, and so as we were kind of designing that feature, one of the things we really had to think about is, well, where does that configuration live? Um, and as I mentioned on one of the earlier slides, one of the guiding principles of Linkerd is to kind of minimize configuration, make it easy to use, make it just work out of the box. Uh, but there's a few places where you really do need user input in order to decide what the behavior should be. You know, we can't automatically determine who should be allowed to talk to whom. That's really something that has to be configured because only the people operating the, the cluster know what that behavior is supposed to be. 
And so, you know, this began the thought, this began the thought process of how should we, how should, where should we put this configuration? And, you know, a natural place to, to put that configuration would be on the service, right? When we think about services in Kubernetes, we think, hey, I want to uh, restrict access to this service to only certain identities. So that seems like a natural place to put that configuration to somehow attach that authorization policy onto a service. But uh, as we kind of got into this, what we realized is that service might not actually be the best place for this. And the reason that is, is because when you think of service, there's actually kind of two concepts that are, that are sometimes commingled there. Um, I think the, the gateway API kind of refers to them as service front ends and service back ends. I like to think of them as service targets and service receivers. And, and so what I mean by this is that the service kind of have, has two parts. So there's the service front end or the service target which is usually a um, cluster IP or a DNS record. And that is something that a client sends traffic to, so it's a target. On the other hand, there's the place where the tra traffic actually goes after it is sent to that service. So this is usually a list of endpoints or a list of pods or a list of backends. These are where the service goes, or this is where the traffic goes when you send it to this service. And a service object kind of commingles those two concepts. And if you wanted to attach policy onto that, um, authorization policy, you run into this problem where you can have pods, backend pods, which are in multiple services. You can have backend pods which are not in any service. And so when a backend pod receives traffic, it really doesn't know which service was used, which service was targeted uh, to, to send traffic to me. So in other words, if we had authorization policy attached to these services, we wouldn't know which policy to use. And furthermore, if a client connected directly to that pod without using a service, does that mean that it should bypass the authorization policy? So, of course, this doesn't make sense. So we had to come up with a different resource to kind of encapsulate this idea of a traffic uh, receiver rather than traffic target. In other words, put this authorization policy directly on the service backend, not on the service front end. Uh, so we came up with these uh, new resources, server and server authorization. And if we take a look at what's here uh, in the server resource, it's very, very simple. So there's just a pod selector, which selects which pods this service refers to, or this server, I'm sorry, this server refers to, uh, and a port. And so uh, this is another difference from services, where a service can have many ports defined, and you can actually use a service uh, and target a port that's not defined on that service. With a server, uh, it's specifically talking about one single port. And so this defines very specifically a traffic uh, receiver. And so therefore we can set uh, authorization policy on that server and we can say, well, for this server, here are the clients who I want to authorize, uh, who I think should be allowed to talk to this server. And so that's what the server authorization resource is. It's a resource which you know, selects which server it's going to apply to, and then it's going to give a list of clients that are allowed to connect to it. And that list of clients can be defined uh, in a number of ways. You can say, I'm going to allow anyone, just unauthenticated, unauthenticated, and, and anyone's allowed to connect to it. Or you can say anyone, as long as they're in the mesh and they have a valid identity, they're allowed. Or you can restrict it down and say, only these certain identities are allowed. And so those two together uh, make up the Linkerd authorization primitives. So this is kind of taking a step back what that kind of looks like. So you see on the right there, there's the bar pod, and that's the one we're trying to control access to. Above it, you can see that there's a server that's defined for it, which selects a certain port. So in this case, we're just talking about port 80. And then above that, uh, there's the server authorization, which says, here are the clients which are allowed to connect to the server. And in this case, you know, we're only going to allow uh, MTLS connections from, uh, from pods that have the foo service account identity. And then so on the left hand of the slide there, you can see that on the top, there's the BAS pod, which does not have the right identity, so it's not allowed to connect. And that connection will be rejected by Linkerd. And then at the bottom, the foo pod, which is allowed because it does have the right identity, so it's allowed to connect. So what does this have to do with the gateway API? Um, well, let's give a little bit of an overview of what the Gateway API is, for those who aren't familiar. So the Gateway API is the set of Kubernetes resources that are very useful for defining uh, the behavior of gateways. 
And one of the kind of key ideas here is that there are a bunch of different resources which exist at different layers and are owned by different personas. So at the top there, you see there's the gateway class, which uh, is a resource representing an, a, a type of ingress, or type of gateway, rather. Uh, and then below that, you have the gateway resource itself. And so these might be owned by, by cluster operators. And then below that, you've got HTTP routes, uh, which can be owned by individual application developers. And those attach up to the gateways and say, here, for this route, um, I'd like to attach this to the gateway. And if you get any traffic for this route, please send it to the service. Here's another route. If you get any traffic for this route, please send it to this other service. And so there's kind of some cool ideas in here. This idea that you can have these uh, resources at different layers, which kind of attach up to each other, and that they can be owned by different personas. Uh, so this is kind of how that looks uh, as an ingress is as ingress traffic is coming in. You know that traffic first goes to the gateway, and then it's going to look and see which HTTP routes it has attached to it, and uh, whichever route matches that traffic uh, is going to determine where that request is going to go to. So what does this have to do with service meshes, and how is this useful? So this is all kind of to do with ingress. Uh, which is not something that Linkerd really does right now. Uh, Linkerd is more uh, interested in managing east-west service-to-service traffic within the cluster. So, so how does this apply? Um, and if you take a look at the structure of the HTTP route resource, uh, there's a few kind of interesting parts to it. So on the top right, you'll see there's a, a parent ref on an HTTP route, and this is kind of uh, describes what that route attaches to. So in all of the ingress uh, cases, we had that attaching up to a gateway. But you could imagine that attaching to someone else, something else. You could imagine having an HTTP route, which is attached to a server or a service in your cluster, and uh, defining policy for uh, service mesh traffic rather than for ingress traffic. Um, and then down at the bottom, you see that it's kind of made up of two parts down there. There's the match, which uh, defines what kind of traffic is going to match that rule. So that's usually. Uh, path, either path-based matching or header-based matching or, or a combination. Uh, and then on the right, you have the behaviors that uh, should be taken for traffic which matches that route. So either a set of filters that, that uh, apply some logic uh, or some back-end refs that indicate where that traffic should go. And so this is kind of an example of what that spec might look like uh, in YAML. And so the, the kind of idea that we really latched onto here, which we thought was really interesting, is, well, one, this gives us a way to talk about routes, which allows us to specify policy in a more fine-grained way. It means that when we're talking about authorization policy, we don't have to authorize an entire server and say, for this server, you know, here are the clients that are allowed to talk to it. We can be a little bit more specific and say, well, we actually only want to authorize these clients for this route on this server. We want to say that if, for example, you have a, uh, an admin server, you might want unauthenticated access to the liveness and readiness probe uh, endpoints, because that's going to be hit by the kubelet. Uh, you might want to make sure that Prometheus has access to scrape the metrics endpoint. You might want to uh, further lock down other endpoints that are let you people do administrative tasks and make sure that those are only accessible to you know, people who really should have access to them, or, or service accounts that should really have access to them. Um, and the other interesting thing here is that this gives us a way to kind of attach not just authorization policies, but other potentially other kinds of policies as well onto these, onto these resources. Uh, so this is kind of the structure that, that uh, was informed by that in Linkerd. Uh, we adopted uh, the HTTP route type from the, from the gateway API. We had to modify it a little bit in order to, to fit our purposes. But um, we now have support for HTTP routes. Uh, and those can attach on to uh, servers so that you can, authorize, uh, you can authorize routes rather than authorizing an entire service. So it gives you that, that more fine-grained control. Um, and we also made this a little bit more generic so that when you have an authorization policy, uh, that can kind of target a wide range of different resources, depending on how granular you want that authorization to be. So you can authorize access to an entire namespace, just to a specific uh, resource, uh, or even more specifically to a specific route. And so this was added in Linkerd 2.12, which was released uh, fairly recently. So we now have much more granular support for uh, the way you can do server authorization. <clears throat> 
OK, so looking to the future, what, what's coming next? Uh, so if anyone is kind of familiar with uh, some of the, the more advanced features in Linkerd, one of them is called service profiles. And so service profiles are, are a feature we have in Linkerd that allow you to configure things like retries, retry budgets, uh, timeouts, uh, and do that kind of on a per route, uh, in a per route way. So you can say these routes are retriable, these routes have timeouts. Um, and that's going to sound pretty similar to the, the stuff that we've been talking about earlier, which is attaching policy onto HTTP routes defined in the Gateway API. So these are kind of two parallel ways of, of doing the same thing. And we want to kind of slowly unify that uh, and move away from service profiles and move more towards this Gateway API style approach of policy attachment, where you can have resources which represent policies like you know, retriability or timeouts or authorization. And you can attach those policies onto HTTP routes. And this gives us a much uh, more, uh, an approach that's a lot more consistent with the way things are done in the Gateway API and feels more Kubernetes native than, than what we had before. So, so why are we doing this? What, what is the purpose of adopting the Gateway API? Um, I think there's a few reasons why the Gateway API is really interesting for defining these types of things. Uh, one of the primary ones is that these Gateway API types give us a standard way to define this rather than having to come up with these new structures or new types ourselves. So rather than needing to uh, maintain our own version of HTTP route or, or route, uh, we can rely on what already exists in the Gateway API. And that can kind of be maintained independently of, of, our, of, of Linkerd. And, and we know that it's, um, you know, it's going to be kept, kept up to date. Um, so that's a lot easier for us as maintainers. It's a lot, also a lot easier for adopters who are looking to use these technologies. That means that if they are familiar with the Gateway API, they've learned Kubernetes, and they're trying to adopt Linkerd, they don't have to go and learn an entirely new set of APIs, an entirely new set of resources, an entirely new set of concepts. They can just uh, use what they already know, and it should feel intuitive and natural. And uh, the Gateway API is just a well-designed API. It's very well thought out. It's got uh, extensibility points built into it in places that make sense. Uh, and it's, um, it's really nice to work with. It's very intuitive. Um, the cons of, of adopting the Gateway API are that it's, it's still fairly new, and it's still kind of evolving a little bit. Um, so there may be still things that we don't know or that we discover over time, and there's always a possibility for API churn as it continues to mature. But I think being part of that conversation and, uh, and adopting it now, I think, makes a lot of sense for the project. So I'm very excited to see where it goes. And in fact, you know, the Gateway API was originally intended to be used for gateways. Uh, but there's a, an initiative called GAMMA, which stands for the Gateway API for Mesh Management and Administration, which is working through how the Gateway API should be evolved uh, to uh, accommodate service mesh uh, use cases. So we're very involved in these discussions. If this is something that's of interest to you, I highly recommend that you get involved as well. Um, and kind of as this can, these discussions continue to happen and we continue to uh, work on this, you know, we're going to be at the forefront of, of supporting whatever Gamma recommends uh, for uh, using the, the Gateway API in a service mesh concept, uh, context. OK, so what are the main ideas here? Uh, I think the main things we learned from, from kind of working with the Gateway API and, uh, and, and, and trying to adopt it and, and use it for, for Linkerd is that this difference between traffic front ends and traffic back, or service, service front ends and service back ends was really important. You know, trying to reason about the difference between a traffic target, you know, in the case of a service, this is something like a, a cluster IP or, or a DNS record and a traffic backend or receiver, which is the actual endpoint or pod that's receiving that traffic, it is really important to keep that, that difference uh, distinct in your head. Uh, otherwise, things can get very, very muddy. And I think the Gateway API does a really good job of, of calling out that difference explicitly. Um, you know, the other idea that we really wanted to, to lean into is to not reinvent the wheel. We wanted to use the Gateway APIs uh, because they made sense for us, and it didn't make sense for us to just kind of come up with those APIs on our own when we could be engaging in the community and, and kind of playing nice in the ecosystem. 
Uh, and this policy attachment idea from, from the Gateway API, where you can have these policy resources that represent you know, things like client-side policy, like, like, um, like uh, uh, routing, or, or circuit breaking, or retries, or timeouts, uh, or server authorization, and having those attach onto HTTP routes or onto higher level resources uh, is a really nice framework, and it makes a lot of sense for, for gateways, and it also makes a lot of sense for meshes. And so we wanted to kind of lean into that. Uh, so if you're interested in kind of learning more, uh, kind of diving deeper into a lot of these concepts around uh, uh, the way that Linkerd uses the Gateway API or other uh, deep dive Linkerd concepts, uh, there is a Service Mesh Academy that I can highly recommend. Uh, it is a monthly hands-on uh, training. Their next one looks like it's from November 11th to 17th. And if that is of interest to you, I highly recommend you check it out. Uh, it, you can check it out at buoyant.io slash SMA. Service Mesh Academy. And, and if you're interested in kind of running Linkerd, uh, but taking some of the administrative burden off, uh, there's also a fully managed Linkerd, which uh, is called Buoyant Cloud, and it can handle things like automated upgrades, um, version tracking, uh, certificate rotation, and, and a bunch of other administrative tasks that uh, would otherwise fall to the cluster administrator. So uh, if that's of interest, I highly recommend you check that out as well. Um, and I also want to shout out, uh, once again, this is talk is by my colleague, Matei. He did a really good job with it. If you liked this talk, please make sure you uh, contact him on, on Slack or on, on Twitter and let him know. I can't take credit. Um, but other than that, thanks for listening and happy to take any questions. You mentioned that uh, one of the cons is, you know, ingress. It, is it a replacement for your ingress, or can it complement your ingress like a traffic? It, it complements your ingress. So there's kind of, you know, your ingress may be using the gateway API, but we are also using the gateway API for for east-west traffic inside the inside the cluster. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Staying with the cons for a moment. Um, so the other con you talked about was it, the gateway API is kind of new, um, especially with um, working with a service mesh. So we don't have a service mesh yet. We have ingresses that are Kong, and I understand Kong can work with the gateway API. So if I go back to my team and say, OK, let's, let's start using the gateway API for our Kong stuff, and now we can start sort of getting into using Linkerd through gateway API as well. Am I jumping the gun? Is this production ready, or is it too early to be thinking that way? No, I don't think you're jumping the gun. So I think these are kind of mostly separate concerns, right? You've got Kong for your ingress. You perhaps have service mesh needs. You can use Linkerd for your service mesh. I think there's going to be a little bit of a confluence in the future between the types that they use. Like if you have HTTP routes defined on your ingress, you may be able to eventually use those uh, to attach policy onto that Linkerd will respect. Um, but uh, there's not any kind of um, any conflict between the two.